is the uh, Yamaha Electone EO7 and we've got some notes to repair on this uh, some of the notes are not sounding or they're intermittent and those notes are the F1 that's the first F and the E flat, the second E flat that one there and then we've got the fourth F sharp that one there uh, the fourth G I'm talking about the fourth octave up as in uh, one, two, three, four. This is in fact intermittent. Of going to the dentist. Ah, oh, there we are. Actually, that's okay. Just like a dentist. <laughs> the fourth B flat. Yeah, that one's faulty. If you, you have to bang it down hard. <clears throat> and the fourth C being the one, two, three, four. That's the fourth C on the upper manual. <clears throat> so there we've got seven notes to do on that one. And on the lower manual, the uh, F, the first F sharp. Intermittent. The first D. Which is almost okay. But it's nothing to do with them as well. So, uh, there we are, let's get started. As ever, the first thing you do when you're going to repair anything electrical, electronic, is uh, switch it off there, but also more important is to. And to get at these faulty notes. notes, what we need to do is to raise up the top half of this uh, console. Now if we look over the back you'll see that there are in fact hinges. There's a hinge here and there's one on the other side which means that this top lifts up. The way we get at that is tip the, you can tip the and organ back. Nine screws you have to take out. These along here, there's one there, one there, one there, another one here there's one at the back there and there's another one here with a big washer on and to get it um, this final screw here all you have to do is get hold of the board at the front which covers the speakers this is where we are and this is held on by velcro so all you've got to do is pull it it will come off we can repair that damage as well while that is and that reveals the speakers be able to get that final one with the wash. Here we are, and these are the organ, <clears throat> about eight inches from the wall. Now we can lift the top up, and that will rest against the wall. And while we're uh, here, um, I've sellotaped these screws down onto a piece of paper, and then we can keep them on there, and they won't roll over the place and get lost. So I've also uh, noticed we've got a little, uh, a little bonnet catch here, <laughs> a little bonnet lever, so you can lift this up. And you can uh, prop it up under, let's have a look, it probably goes in there I would think. But uh, it's no use to us because I need to get at this properly, we're not going to be peeping in here, we're going to be working in here. So now we need to get onto the keyboard side now, these are two keyboards, there's your lower keyboard and your upper keyboard, or you sometimes I call the lower manual and the upper manual. And uh, if we just drop this down here, you see, so this is the lower manual, which is there. I know it's uppermost, but it's called the lower manual, okay. So now we'll get into that. What part. we're going to do now is we're going to take off this panel here and have a look how those switches work underneath the keys and have another go and see if there's any chance we can possibly repair it. Um, there's a few screws here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's just have a look and see those switches. Maybe they can be fixed. So now to <coughs> have a look at the keyboards, I've taken out the screws here and um, we've just got a few more to undo that one, that one, that one, that one, that one and that one taking all the screws out now now we're going to gently lift this uh, let this thing come back and see what we find underneath it well, it's a printed circuit board as we can see so we'll just lay that down there there's nothing loose on there to leave 
lose and we'll have a closer look at well, this. We've taken this off now. and what you don't lose this as well if you do take it off because that goes on there. You can see that it goes on the screw hole. Um, I've got this here. Now when you press the notes down from the top side this is pressed out. You can actually feel the note pressing on it. Now that strip there that strip there, you can feel the note pressing on it when you press down on the note from the other side. When that note is pressed down, the strip comes out and presses across these three contacts here, four contacts here. So <clears throat> I thought that this must be a resistive strip, even though it's rubbery. And I put the meter across it, and in the space of um, a centimeter, it seems to have a resistance of about 65 ohms over two centimeters it goes up to 120 130 ohms so it is a resistive strip and it's uh it's in sections there are breaks in it but those breaks are done on purpose they're not uh, worn out or by accident they're done on purpose um so i'm going to take this resistive strip off now and check out what's this. underneath it i let the strip come off i haven't took this off before so I'm playing in uh, unknown territories here, if I can get hold of it. Right, here we go. Whoops, there we are. Now then, let's have a look at this. Yes. And you can see this is pretty filthy. And there's the keyboard. These were the notes pressed through here. And you can see it's pretty, it's pretty craggy. It's got cobwebs and dust and rust and muck and all sorts in here. So I'm going to clean that all out. So I'm going <coughs> to check all these connections are not broken off or anything. And you can see, if I press the note, put it on the side. You can see that it comes through, and that is meant to come through and press through that uh, nylon rubbery strip and push so those come through they press onto here on the filthy side and they press that strip across which then is fitted across there you see like that so they make contact then because that's a resistive strip it makes contact and gives a different resistance reading. Uh, it'll give a higher or a, uh, you know, it'll vary the voltage and come up with the notes. So if this resistance strip is mucky, it's not going to play. And it's very mucky there. So I'm going to carefully clean that. Um, I think we might be onto something here. And I'm going to check all these notes here to make sure that none of those little pips are broken off. And uh, we'll come back in. Clean these things up, and it's pretty mucky. These connections here, these um, the contacts along here, I'll clean them with something. And uh, this strip here has got to be cleaned up. Now, I'm not uh, going to pretend that I know exactly what this thing is, but it's. I don't know. Oh, these must be these must be resistive strips. These must be resistive strips. I put the meter across them, and for an instance, I'm getting a reading. Um, but this is uh, that resistive that strip goes across these connections, and they must it must make the connection across them. Um, so I'm going to clean these. Uh, contacts up here because they're a bit mucky and I'm going to clean this strip up as well because if that is in fact a conductive resistive strip um, then that uh, needs to be cleaned as well as do the contacts and that could account for why the notes are not all working because of them all becoming corroded and um, over time, as you can see, the, not very well um, As you can see, the corrosion on the notes there, like a powder. 
if this was a touch sensitive keyboard I would suspect that the powder had come out of the contacts because I believe there's some system where it works a uh, touch sensitive keyboard for pressure impact to give a more piano effect uh, the way it's done is with a powder filled switch of some sort um, I appreciate any comments on, on how these things work if anybody knows you know, I'll get on with cleaning these contacts up now so I'm just cleaning these contacts up here they're not that bad I'm just using a bit of green black sponge um, and uh, I don't know if I should use fine emery on them and go across each and every contact individually but um, it certainly looks a bit of an improvement already um, so Gotta be careful not to damage the printed circuit on these things. So if you damage the printed circuit board then you know you won't be finished. Now I'm gonna clean up this strip here. it's been cleaned up and uh, had a little clean up on the back as well as you can see so now we'll just uh, reassemble our parts and uh, give it a try I've just got to clean out this part first I'll, you know, I'll use a paintbrush and a vacuum cleaner to get all that muck out of there and the mock off here and uh, now we can uh, start the reassembly of this uh, yeah. arrangement yeah. strip the contact strip back in there it's just placed in it's not glued in it just it just simply slots back in there and um, <coughs> the uh, the sections the shorter section seems to come down to the low notes end here just in case that's going to have any relevance because this here is a resistive strip so it may be quite relevant ok so now we're going to reassemble it now the gasket if you look at the gasket you'll see there are um, these lugs on it now those lugs are not the screw holes where the screws go through where the screws go through are in the uh, pieces which are missing those in fact hang on little plastic lugs and so it'll hold itself up there and you'll know if you've got it the right way up because they'll all have plastic lugs on them so let's try that this way around that seems to work now if you had it say that way around that's not going to work that way around yes all the lugs go through the holes if you had it this way around let's see if it works now no and yeah that seems to work that way around as well so we have to just be careful that we can get it the right way on so that the um no so that all the logs go through the holes in the right places Now that doesn't look right to me because it's sticking out this end and it's short that end. So let's turn this around and see how it fits on this way. No, wrong way up. Turn it around. Put on this way around. Now that all the logs are going on, and 
yes, now it's nicely fitted, both ends are right. Every plastic log sticking up is going through a hole in the gasket and every screw has got a, um, a cut out in the plastic to go uh, a third of the way around the screw hole. So that's that. And the next piece we put on now is the printed circuit board. It goes so you can read the writing. Connections on the left, ready to take these connections what we took off earlier. And this goes not like that, it goes further up. So we'll put that on there. And once again, we've got the lugs to guide us on. So you can only get it on the right way. Next, we have to put all these screws back in. So I'm going to go along there and put all the screws in. I'll switch the camera off so not to bore you to death with that. So now after removing the screws, we can take this panel off and have a look at it. And uh, as we can see, there's more of that corrosion, or well, it's not corrosion, so much as like a powdery deposit on uh, a lot of these contacts. You can see that there going across. On the one on the left, there's also that one in the middle there. So they need to clean up and there's one here that's also got that again that powdery positive <coughs> in the middle there and we'll take this strip off now which is the glossy side out but it'll only go in one way properly anyway so we'll just take that off there that's for clean as well and now we have the uh, contact strip this flexible um, conductive resistive strip and there are powdery deposits on that as well, so we'll have to take this out as well now. And uh, it's, it's uh, quite flexible, if you just get hold of it and pull it off. You can see the powdery deposits on it. So I take this off for cleaning. Knock it on the back as well, but it would be on that side anyway. So that needs to be clean on these contact strips. You can see there's a lot of, uh, lot of powdery deposits on this. And uh, once again, the mechanical side of it underneath the keys uh, could do with a little bit of a clean up as well. So we'll get when to you come to clean these, these put it on a soft surface because underneath you've got um, all these little diodes underneath, <coughs> and uh, you don't want to be putting undue pressure on there. So, uh, like a towel or something, will absorb it and make it an even pressure. Um, I'm just using a greenback sponge actually and carefully cleaning these deposits off here. And uh, as the same as in the other one, just a very careful clean on these and ensure not to uh, damage the printed circuit board. Don't have to rub too hard and that cleans it up. I'm going to go all along the here now. Got that part cleaned up. Next part now is this resistive strip. So now we uh, put this back in here, uh, shiny side out, and uh, we hook that back onto the lugs through the little screw. And when you there. put this plastic um, cover back on here, this gasket. Make sure that you've got your little holes, um, little indentations for the screws to go in and it hooks onto these lugs uh, here and here, the lugs sticking out and you've got three holes here, there should be three little cutouts in the gasket there for them to go on and if it goes on and all your lugs are in play, uh, if they're over the lugs, it's not on there, on there. Then and right there. Uh, contact circuit board, now we've cleaned all the contacts up. Your two plugs on that end for those two green plugs to go in. And you can't really go wrong then. Over the on. lugs again sticking out, a little pin sticking out there and there. And there. 
there and there and if they're sticking out and you've got the plugs on the left with the writing so you can read it like that you can now put your screws, screws in. back in there and uh, these are not screw holes here or there with the green one round it that's not a screw hole neither is that nor that nor that don't try and screw screws in here like I tried to put our two connectors back in here Okay, so now we'll give it a test. We'll drop the uh, drop the top down. We'll put our plugs in. All the screws are in. Moved all my tools out of there. Drop the top down, and the uh, the notes will go through them here. There was the first F, which was faulty. That's good now. And then we had the second D flat, which was faulty. Which is fine. The F sharp was faulty, that's fine. The G was faulty, that's fine. And the B flat was faulty. The B and the E. And there we are. <coughs> and uh, on the lower manual we had um, the first F sharp was faulty. It's okay now. And the first D was faulty. That's fine. And there we are. So, just a question of cleaning. And that was the Yamaha Electone EL7. And uh, as I say, I'm, a, I'm an accordionist, not an organist, but uh, it'll do for mocking about on and pretending I'm an organist. <laughs> Bye for now. Hope it was some use to you. Leave us some feedback. Thanks very much.